Okay, everyone, welcome to our webinar series on addressing single use plastic products pollution using a life cycle approach. This is the second of two sessions for this time zone. My name is Alison Watson and I will be your moderator for this session. And I'm joined by an exciting lineup of speakers and my unit colleagues, Laura, Lorenz and Claudia, who are also online and will be helping to run this session today. Before we start, I want to give you some information on how to use the WebEx platform. Next slide. Okay, you'll see here that this should look like your screen. And if you look at the right hand bottom corner of your screen, you'll see a menu bar that says participants chat and three dots. And I've put a big red circle around it. You can click on any of these to pop out the menu. And I'd encourage you to do so now because that means you'll be able to see where you can enter your Q&A straight away when you have a burning question, where you can chat to tell us any information or share any resources. Uh, and also if you want to talk verbally, you can raise your hand and if we have time we will allow some uh, verbal um, comments off the floor. So just a reminder, the main way we'll be interacting today is using that Q&A box, and we really encourage you to write, to write in your questions to any of our speakers. Um, it really makes a very interactive session. Um, and please ask your question to all panelists. Okay, next slide, please. Quick reminder today for everyone, the webinar is being recorded and we will try and get you a recording and copy of the presentations uh, very soon, um, perhaps shortly after the next webinar, which will be around the end of next week. Next slide, please. Now, before we start, I'm going to try, um, a, oh no, I haven't, I'm not going to do a poll yet. I might do one later uh, when we've got a few more people um, joining. So I'm gonna move to the next slide. And I'm just going to point out here that we have a very full agenda. So we do have those three country case studies, which will be really interesting to hear what actually happens in the country um, and how do policymakers develop policy uh, on single use plastic products. We'll also hear from one of the authors of the LCA meta studies on shopping bags, beverage bottles, takeaway food and takeaway food containers. Um, at the very end, we're going to have a panel session where we invite the three um, country case study speakers to answer your questions. So it will be a lively session at the end there. Next slide, please. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speaker today, Lorenz miller Canal, and he is the Life Cycle Assessment Team Leader from UNEP. Lorenz, welcome. Well, many thanks, uh, Alison, for, for uh, getting us all here today. And good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everyone, wherever you are. Uh, so just uh, I'll speak very, very briefly just to introduce uh, and to explain where, uh, why, why we're here and what's, what's the context. So uh, maybe let's move to the next slide already. Oh, we have it there. <laughs> so, so just in terms of context presented today, uh, it comes from the resolution on addressing single-use plastic products pollution that was approved in, uh, in the last UNEA in March 2019. Um, I will not spend time on this because, well, we already explained it in the previous webinars, but for those of you who were not there, it's worth remembering that that resolution notes that the pollution from single-use plastic products is still growing, uh, despite many actions by all members of the plastics value chain, uh, particularly from governments, but also the private sector. Uh, the third bullet, which is highlighted here, is the work that is being requested uh, by, the re by the resolution, um, work re requested of UNEP, uh, that we will be discussing today. So it's about making available the existing information of the actions that member states, as well as other actors, are uh, taking to address plastic pollution, but also information on the full life cycle impacts of single-use plastic products and their alternatives. Um, this last part, the coordination of the studies, has been coordinated by the Life Cycle Initiative. Um, we're now in the next slide already. So this is just a summary of the outline that the, the milestones that we're being uh, that, that we've been approaching in the last uh, year, year and a half, um, and the work that is going to happen until the end of the year and the next UNEA uh, in February. Um, you will, will have seen already that the first life cycle assessment meta studies that will be presented today are already available online in the website that you have here on your screens. Um, and today we're obviously in this dissemination phase in the webinars. Uh, so if we, move, if we move to the next one, please. Uh, and before I give the microphone back to Alison, just, just to remind you uh, that uh, the, the, the discussion that we're having today 
seeds in the framework of a much broader work in UNEP on single-use plastic products. And uh, so many of you are following stock-taking exercise of actions by member states. Is happening in the context of the ad hoc expert group on marine litter and microplastics. There's also work being done on legislation, um, the work of the One Planet Network uh, task force on, on uh, plastics. So there's certainly a lot, and, and I encourage you to, uh, to explore the website. Uh, but now, uh, certainly through this uh, webinar, also remember that this is, uh, we want to have a dialogue. So please uh, keep posting your questions via the Q&A, as, as mentioned by Alison. Uh, and we will address as many of them during the um, during the webinar, but otherwise we'll we'll strive to also provide answers after the webinar. So now, yes, without further delay, uh, over back to you, Alison, uh, for the next speaker. Thank you. Great, thanks, Lorenz. Um, excellent introduction, and we will have a speaker uh, next week uh, that will just talk briefly about that ad hoc group uh, as well. I'm just going to open the poll quickly. Just, just Gustav, just just wait, uh, just maybe one minute. <laughs> He's, he's an extremely enthusiastic speaker, so that, that's always a good sign. I'm just going to open this poll and um, I'm going to see if people can put in their choice which, which organisation best represents the organisation that you work for. Uh, it's a good time to do it because we've got 164 people online so far. We'll just give it a little bit more time. And I can see people are already using the chat box, so that is great. I think you've got a few more seconds. And I'm going to just wait till my chat box goes off because I can't see the... And I can't see that, here we go, the results. Let me just show you everyone. Uh, we have, looks like we have, I'm gonna have to do the, it's not giving me the percentages here, but we do have a lot of people from government and the private sector uh, leading. Uh, and research organisations. So I'll give you the percentages later. Uh, it just helps us to understand who's in the room. So thank you for joining us. Uh, and that um, actually brings us to our next speaker, Gustav Sandin. Uh, Gustav is one of the uh, co-authors of these single-use plastic products reports. And uh, he joins us as an LCA expert and researcher from IVL, the Swedish Environmental Institute. And um, he specifically worked on the reports on plastic bottles and takeaway food packaging, but I believe he'll give us a few other highlights um, from the earlier report as well. Welcome, Gustav. Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to talk about our three reports today. Uh, I will stop my video not to create problems here with my Wi-Fi. But uh, And it's nice to see so many people here, several names I recognize since before. Uh, yes, we're going to talk about the three reports on single-use plastic products. Next slide, please. The report covers single-use plastic bags, plastic bottles, and plastic takeaway food packaging. They were written by me and my colleagues Thomas, Christine, and Sofia. Next slide. Uh, the reports the aim at summarizing the current life cycle assessment based knowledge about the environmental performance of single use plastic products and the alternatives. And for each of these products, we compare the environmental performance with several alternatives, such as cotton bags, aluminum cans, and paper alternatives, as well as reusable options. And we looked at the implication of this knowledge for policymakers and other actors aiming at reducing the environmental impact of single-use plastic products. We also looked at the recommendations to LCA practitioners to improve future studies. And the method we used was a meta-analysis of six or seven LCA studies per report. So note that this is not a review of the complete research field, but an in-depth analysis of a few studies. We also looked at reflections on a few other studies uh, when relevant. 
And the selection of studies was done to cover a wide range of different product alternatives and geographical scopes with a focus on peer review studies. I will not go into the details of the selected studies today, but please, these can be found in the reports. And today the focus will be on findings of relevance to policymakers. Next slide, please. First, let, let's start with the report on single-use plastic bags and their alternatives. An important characteristics for the environmental, environmental impact of these products we found to be the material type, the weight of the product, the bag, the number of uses of the bag before disposal, the technology and energy used in production. For example, the climate impact of paper bag varies greatly depending on what fuel is used in pulp and paper production and how the forest is managed where the raw material comes from. Also, waste management was found to be very important. For example, paper bags ending up in landfills emit methane, contributing to climate change, but they, if they are incinerated, they are most often considered climate neutral, not contribute, contributing to climate change. Whereas fossil-based plastic, ba fossil plastic bags being incinerated contribute to climate change. Also, we saw that the environmental impact of all bags are reduced by recycling. So depending on end-of-life option you have at hand, the relative environmental performance of different bags can differ. Finally, it's important to mention that the ranking of bags varies between environmental impacts. For example, plastic bags is a poor option in terms of littering and microplastics, but scores well in terms of climate change, acidification, eutrophication, water use, and land use. So the overall ranking will depend on the priority of environmental aspects. It's worth noting that the bags are responsible for a significant share of the littering worldwide, but a small share of the climate impact compared to other products. So the priority is not only about the importance of different environmental problems, but also how important the product is for that problem. Next slide, please. We found that reusable bags can be environmentally superior to single-use bags if used many times. A cot cotton bags needs to be reused 50 to 150 times to have lower climate impact than single-use plastic bags. But thicker reusable plastic bags must be reused 5 to 20 times. But this is for climate impact. For other types of environmental indicators, the break-even point takes place at fewer or more number of uses. Also, it should be mentioned that cotton bags and thicker plastic bags may carry more goods, so they may not be functionally identical as single-use bags. This must also be considered. Reducing impacts of bags is not just about choosing, banning, recommending, or prescribing specific material, materials, but also about changing consumer behavior. And this specifically concerns the, to increase the reuse rate and to avoid littering. Finally, the shopping bag that has the least environmental impact is the bag the consumer already has at home. This further emphasizes the importance of reuse. More detailed conclusions on single-use plastic bags are available in the report. For example, you can see how specific parts of the life cycle, such as waste management, influences specific comparison, such as plastic bag versus paper bags versus cotton bags. Next slide, please. Let's move on to the single-use plastic bottles and their alternatives. Here, important characteristics for the environmental impact of these products are material type. And this is not only about plastic bottles versus glass bottles versus aluminum cans, but also about bio-based versus fossil plastics, recycled versus virgin content, etc. So we can see that variations within a material category is often larger than variations between materials. Also, the weight of the bottle is important, the number of uses, the waste management again, maturity of technology, the size of container, and also the geographical context. In particular, we could see that recycling rates of, for example, PET bottles and aluminum cans can vary greatly between regions and countries. And this has an important effect on the relative environmental impact of compared alternatives. Also here we see that there, it's common with trade-offs between impact categories. So these trade-offs must be recognized and managed. And the overall ranking will depend on the priority of environmental aspect. Next slide, please. So let's continue. To reduce the environmental impact of plastic bottles and their alternatives, policies must consider functional differences. For example, the container's capacity to deliver different kinds of beverages to different customers 
at different times. Policies must consider the difference within and between material categories. They must account for differences in technology maturity. They must consider differences in end-of-life practices, for example, differences in collection, recycling, and reuse rates, which in turn depend on geographical context. And finally, they must be based on several sources of information, not only life cycle assessment, as not all relevant environmental impacts are in general covered by LCAs. For example, littering is seldom covered, and impacts of land use, for example, on biodiversity is seldom covered. So you might have to look at other sources of information as well. Please, next slide. Let's move on to the final report on single-use plastic takeaway food packaging and its alternatives. Important characteristics for the environmental impact are material type. For example, single-use polystyrene or paper packaging was shown in this studies to often have better environmental performance than single-use PET, PLA, or aluminum packaging. And PLA is generally a better option than PET. So there are some preferable materials in general. Please read more about this in the report. Having said that, also other factors within each material categories are very important for their relative environmental impact. For example, the weight of the packaging, whether it's single or multi-use, reusable packaging is environmentally preferable if used a sufficient number of times. But not only the number of uses is important, but also how the delivery and take-back system is set up, including transportation modes and distances. Functionality is important. For example, the, pack the capacity of the packaging to prevent food waste, as the food in the packaging often have a larger environmental impact than the packaging itself. Production route and raw material is important. The maturity of technology. The waste management, and here I can mention that food leftovers can impede recyclability of this kind of single-use plastics, making reusability or compostability a more preferable design option for takeaway food packaging compared to the bags and bottles, for example. And finally, geographical context is important, once again, especially it influences consumer behavior and waste management. Next slide, please. So policies on single-use plastic takeaway food packaging and its alternatives must consider functional differences, for example, how well it prevents food waste, but also different materials may be suitable for different types of packaging and different types of food. They must consider differences between and within material categories. They must com consider the complete reuse system, including transportation and washing practices, and not just the number of reuses, although that's very important as well. They must consider differences in end-of-life practices. Again, this is important for all these product categories we talked about today. And they must be based on several sources for information, not only LC. <coughs> Please, next slide. So let's summarize the general message for all these three studies. Policies designed to reduce the environmental impact of single-use plastic products must have a systems perspective, including consideration of the life cycle perspective from cradle to grave, the production of systems and raw materials in use, the end of life infrastructure, the consumer behavior, direct and indirect environmental impact. And we indirect impact, we mean the influence on, for example, how much food waste is created. And finally, trade-offs between environmental impact categories must be recognized and managed. And to enable this system perspective, one must consider or commission context-specific LCA studies, for example, for example, reflecting the particular consumer and waste management practices in the country or region at hand. And the, the studies must cover, uh, one must also consider or commission stud, studies covering other environmental aspects than those covered by LCA, for example, littering. We also recommend to involve LCA expertise when interpreting results, as the influence of system boundaries, allocation methods, and other key assumptions must be understood to fully understand and use the results in a good way. This was uh, very short on each report and some general conclusions. Please read the reports for hopefully more valuable information. They are quite comprehensive, and I think they can be useful for policy development worldwide. 
Next slide, please. Thank you very much for listening to this short presentation. I'm available now for a few minutes to listen on, on questions. Excellent, Gustav. Thank you very much for that presentation. Um, and yeah, very nicely in time as well. So congratulations on that. Uh, there is a lot of information in the study, so I do recommend people um, download them and or have a look at them online and, and read through them. Uh, quite a few questions are coming through. So I have one here. At several occasions, you mentioned that maturity of the technology matters. Could you please explain? Uh, thanks for a good question. Uh, yes, what I mean is that new and less established and smaller scale solutions, both for production and for waste management, often causes larger impact compared to solutions that have matured more and be scaled up to a large extent. So efficiency, efficiency increases over time and with larger scale, often translating to lower, lower environmental impact. And this must be considered when designing policy, not, yet, not to judge new solutions based on unfair comparisons. For example, we can see that some biobased plastics probably perform worse compared to other biobased plastics and compared to fossil based plastics due to less mature technology and smaller scale. This is important to consider in policy making. Great, thank you. Another question here you mentioned something about you have to take into consideration the differences within and between the material categories. What do you mean by between or within the material categories as well as? Between uh, uh, what I mean with within is that the, a, a plastic bottle might look just identical to another plastic bottle uh, at first outlook, but the, the differences in in both the raw material may be significant. The raw material may be recycled or non-recycled, bio-based or non-bio-based, and mm -hmm. also uh, what kind of power is used to power the production is very important, and this is showed both for Plastic, uh, the plastic products, but also the alternatives, specifically paper products. We saw okay. that uh, the, so there are great variations between what may seem as identical products. Uh, but then between material categories, there are also, of course, differences. Uh, but these are often on the same order of magnitude as those within material categories. So you cannot judge just the material category uh, okay. without knowing the full production chain. Okay, great. great. Uh, here's a question here. You mentioned that the functionality of the packaging type needs to be considered. Do you have any concrete suggestions on how to do that within LA, LCA, sorry, functional units or an additional analysis? Uh, I mean, it's, it's good practice in LCA to try to capture as many functional differences as possible. Uh, however, sometimes uh, it, it becomes, if you are too detailed, it becomes impossible to compare any alternatives because they often differ in, in, in some some way uh, yeah. so i think uh, i think uh, yes defining a good functional unit is very important for example a, a serving of a certain food of a certain size uh, to a certain customer uh, but you also maybe need to when you develop policy making you need to also consider uh, what other differences are there in terms of functionality and also a product may have different functionality in different contexts. So it's, uh, they can often be used, uh, I mean, a, a plastic bottle may be used for the different kind of uh, beverages, for example. And yeah. they can be used at home or they can carry, be used to, to carry away uh, the beverage. So it's, okay. yeah. Here's um, a bit, it's, it's prefaced with, I have a bit of a provocative question. And it is, the question is, are there any new conclusions from the studies? All the conclusions I'm seeing and hearing are conclusions that are well known for 20 years and more. Do, what, what's your opinion on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, in our study, there are no new conclusions because it's a meta-analysis of already published studies. Yes. Uh, these studies were uh, published in the last 10 years. And we also looked at early studies, but we can see that the uh, uh, the number of LCA studies have exploded in the last 10 years. So there are much more material available in the past 10 years than before. Uh, so for many of these product categories, uh, and the specific products looked at, uh, the information was not available 20 years ago. Although some general knowledge, knowledge about single-use plastics is is was known among experts, of course. 
uh, but for specific, especially especially the, the novel materials that are covered by the studies that didn't even exist 20 years ago. There's new knowledge available. Excellent. Uh, Good point, Gustav. Yeah. Thank you for that answer. Uh, here's a um, question here. Um, uh, is the, do you know of any work, because you, you recommended some work around this and you saw this as a potential limitation at the moment, but do you know of any work that is looking at trying to measure that littering impact or the microplastics or the biodiversity and, and somehow take that into account? Uh, in LCAs? Yes, there are projects uh, now going on on method development for, for example, marine littering. There's a project, call, project called Marie LCA. Okay. Uh, and you can look at the, the, the website marielca.org, for example. That have be, has been launched to fill the gap of how to make impact assessment of marine littering. And there's also extensive method development going on in terms of a biodiversity impact, the land use impact. Uh, so I think in the in the coming 10 years, we, we will see new knowledge in this field and maybe more fair comparison between product categories as well. But the current available published LCAs, this information is not available. And you often have to look at qualitative studies outside the LCA, LCA field to for this complementary information. Excellent. Thank you for that. That's extremely interesting. Um, here's a question around consumer behaviour. That that seems to be an important part of uh, um, of work uh, on single-use plastic products. How does that get taken into account in the LCA? Um, it's often in terms of the assumptions when it comes to the use and end-of-life phases. Uh, as 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 these are not in control of the producer, these are often a model in terms of scenarios. So you have, for example, uh, several scenarios of the number of reuse times, for example. Uh, so that's often how, how these differences in consumer behavior are captured. Uh, however, um, it, sometimes you also have actual uh, reuse behavior or other consumer behavior of the specific mm -hmm. geographical context. But I, I, there's often a lack of, inf of information and data on actual behavior. Uh, especially use behavior, uh, but uh, whereas the, the, the available uh, end of life data differs between countries. So some countries, there's good data on recyc recycling rates and reuse rates of different materials, whereas, whereas when there's a lack of formal systems or formal infrastructure for end of life, there's a less data available, of course. Okay. Excellent. Here's a question here around on plastic bottles. You mentioned the size of the container matters for the environmental impact. Can you explain more around how that size of the container makes a difference? Yeah, another good question. Uh, of course, larger container has a larger impact, but smaller impact per liter of beverage, uh, per, per volume of beverage, for example. But what we really mean here is that the preferred container material can be different for different container sizes. For example, one of the studies we analyzed showed that paper cartoons are the best option for juice packaging of small volumes, but for bigger volumes, there was no such ben clear benefit for paper cartoons. So the suitable uh, alternative may differ depending on the size of the food or the, the beverage that is to be, that is considered. Excellent. I've got one last question for you. It's around reusable bags. Um, we know that the recommendations looked at um, that reusable bags uh, were a good option um, and the, the bag in, in the person's home is the best bag to be using. Um, they do have to be used more than once though, obviously. Um, do you think consumers need more education about the fact that they do need to be reusing their reusable bags? Does there need to be more effort around that, or do you think people understand yes. it? Uh, that's that's why one of our recommendations in terms of the in the bag report is that we need both incentives and educations provided to consumers to reduce both consumption of bags, but also uh, uh, the re reusability of different bags, and also in terms of of where to put it at the end of life. Yes. Yeah. So it's so yes, 
we do need more education to consumers. And this can be you know, in terms of inf consumer information on the bag itself or in other forms, of course. Great. Thank you so much, Gustav. That, that is it. You, you have um, got to the end uh, and you've answered um, all those questions um, extremely well. It's given us a lot more information and I can see that a lot of people are asking questions and getting further information as well from the team behind the scenes. So it's obviously sparked a bit of discussion there. So thank you, Gustav, for joining us uh, today. And um, I know that you have another meeting to go to, so you can't uh, spend all your time uh, today with us. But thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening. Um, Thank you. Yeah, good luck with the rest of the meeting. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Okay, I'd now like to uh, introduce our next speaker, uh, Ms. Wasana Jang Prajak. Uh, Wasana is an environmentalist with 22 years of experience on National Plan on Integrated Waste Management, Packaging Waste Management and Waste Management by the 3R strategy, Reduce, Reuse, Recycle. And she works for the Pollution Control Department in the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment as an environmentalist professional level um, and uh, in the government of Thailand. So uh, welcome, I think. I've got the wrong name on there, but that's okay because we weren't quite sure who was going to present today. Wasana, can you can you um, see the screen and unmute yourself? I'm just going to make sure Wasana is with us. So I don't think Wasana is there. I'm just going to check the uh, participants because she may have come in under that. Yes, apparently okay. she's in the participant. Oh. Okay, I'm just going to promote her now. Wasana, I'm just going to promote you. And you should be able to be a panelist now, and you should be able to unmute yourself. Hello. Hello, welcome. Hello. Good morning, and good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Wasana Tempta. Today I will share you the experience in developing policy on single-use plastic products. Next slide, please. Next, please. Uh, from the information of the Pollution Control Department, during the last uh, year, uh, the average plastic waste uh, will generate approximately 2 million tons per year or 12% uh, percent of uh, the total of solid waste generation. Uh, around uh, 0 0.5 million tons per year uh, of generated plastic waste are recovered for material recycling and energy recovery. For the less of plastic, 1.5 million tons are mostly single-use plastic, such as the plastic bag, plastic cup, plastic store, plastic box, and uh, from food container. Uh, most of them uh, were disposed of by landfill or incinerator, and some is going to a dumping site. The survey from the Department of Marine Coastal Resources found that the most of top 10 of marine debris, uh, such as the plastic bottle, plastic bag, uh, the glass bottle, and then we they found the uh, EPS uh, foam uh, scrap, and they found many kind of plastic uh, uh, scrap in the uh, ocean. Next, please. Uh, Thailand by the Pollution Control Department uh, has developed the Thailand roadmap on the plastic waste management. We uh, conduct the uh, roadmap, which uh, the aim is to serve as the framework and direction for preventing and solving of plastic waste in the country. The basic principle to apply for the roadmap development are uh, the first is the life cycle approach, the second is the three R principle, uh, the public private partnership the concept of circular economy, and the last concept is a uh, responsible consumption and production. Next, please. Uh, when we developed the, the policy on the single-use plastic, we 
uh, look for the policy linkage. We have the national strategy of Thailand and national reform plan on national resources and environment. We have the national economic and social development plan and the national waste management master plan. All plan is uh, uh, said that uh, we should to uh, protect and uh, the environment how by uh, reduce the waste and we will show to uh, uh, bring the 3R and the uh, circular economy to improve the waste management. The vision of the, the plan is moving toward sustainable plastic management by circular economy. Next, please. This picture shows that uh, the activity uh, in the roadmap, we have the uh, three phases. The first and the second phase uh, uh, in 2019 and 2022, it stopped using seven items of the plastic. And the third phase, uh, we focus mainly on the recycling target plastic waste by 100% to circular economy concept. Next, please. The target of the roadmap, uh, we have the two target of the roadmap. The first one is uh, reduce and stop using plastic target with the use of seven types of environmentally friendly replacement material. Uh, the first, uh, we choose to stop using three types within this uh, the year 2019. In the last year, uh, we uh, stop using three types of uh, plastic. The first is the uh, plastic uh, capsule. The second is plastic product containing oxo, and the third one is the uh, microbead. And for the end of the year 2022, we will be stop using four types uh, of plastic. The first is plastic bag, uh, which is the uh, thickness than. Uh, 36 micron and the second is food foam container uh, the third one is the thin plastic cup and the plastic straw the second target of the roadmap is uh, we should to achieve the 100 percent recycling rate of the target plastic waste by the year 2027 next please for uh, after we conduct the roadmap, we uh, propose the plastic waste management action plan, which uh, we looking for the uh, three phases of the, the the measure for the action plan. The first is uh, reducing the plastic waste uh, as source, uh, and reducing the use of single use plastic at the consumption process. And the last one is we should to manage. Uh, the post-consumer plastic waste. Uh, now we propose the uh, action plan uh, to the cabinet. Uh, the, the, the second plan, uh, the, the action plan is uh, now is uh, we conclude for the first phase and the second phase uh, uh, together, uh, we will propose to the cabinet soon. Next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, show what the going on action of the plastic waste in Thailand. Uh, we have uh, many, many kind of uh, program and campaign for the uh, plastic waste. Uh, in the part of uh, uh, public private partnership, we have the voluntary agreement with the uh, five largest drinking water producer to stop using capsule for drinking water bottle. Uh, from uh, two years ago. And we have the voluntary agreement and campaign with the uh, more than 40 supermarkets and department stores to stop using plastic bags. And uh, in the last of uh, uh, September, we this year we have voluntary agreement with the, the, the uh, food delivery platform uh, to reducing uh, single-use plastic in food delivery. Next slide, please. 
Next slide, please. Uh, this is uh, the example, the best practice for the uh, reducing plastic waste uh, in Thailand. We reducing plastic waste and uh, plastic bag and foam container in the government office. And we also develop the uh, KPI for the East Department to reduce the plastic bag and foam container. We have the program to reducing the plastic bag in market, supermarket, uh, department store, and convenience store, and grocery store. And we ban the plastic bag and foam food container in the national park. And we set the priority to reduce single-use plastic in the 24 coastal provinces. Next slide, please. This is the best practice for the plastic reduction in the government office. We uh, launched the program and now we reduce the uh, foam container. Actually, more than uh, 1,000 1, million pieces per year. And we reduce the plastic bag, uh, 4,000 million bag per year, and maybe reduce the uh, single use plastic cup. Uh, 40 million cups per year. This kind of thing is uh, we try to uh, make for the KPI for the the head of the, the, the government to to reduce the plastic waste. We should to be the example for uh, the best practice for the people and for the private sector in our country. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the, the, the program that we uh, uh, conduct the MOU uh, to reduce single-use plastic in food delivery with uh, uh, more than five uh, uh, del delivery platform uh, to reduce the plastic waste and single-use plastic from the, the food delivery. Next slide, please. Uh, this is your the, the slang for uh, developing the plastic waste, uh, single use plastic waste management in Thailand. Uh, for the, the first is global issue. We, we have faced uh, in the same uh, problem for the single use plastic uh, in, 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 our, in Thailand. And uh, we try to uh, reduce the, the plastic waste. The second is government policy. Uh, if we uh, we try to uh, using the three R's reduce, reduce, and recycle, but if we uh, try to change to the circular economy, uh, we think the three R is not a uh, uh, cannot solve the problem of the sinking root plastic. So actually, we should to ban it or replace it uh, before. Ban single use plastic, uh, as many countries and the city are doing, and replace the petroleum based single use plastic with uh, alternative bio materials such as uh, maybe the paper or the glass or compostable plastic. Or we should to improve the waste collection uh, and send to, uh, send to the appropriate treatment facility to treat for the uh, single use plastic. It, the the important thing for the develop the policy for the uh, second use plastic, we should to change the behavior of the consumer. This is the difficult to 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 do it, but uh, we try to do for many many campaigns and uh, we will uh, try to launch the 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 plastic waste management law or regulation to uh, maybe to change the behavior of the consumer. Excellent. You, have, you have 20 seconds, uh, Wasana, just to um, conclude. Yeah, okay, thank you. For the uh, technology and innovation, we uh, should to uh, to uh, 
uh, replacement of the, the, the secondary plastic for another uh, packaging, or we should to try to find the incentives, uh, economic incentives to reduce the single-use plastic. And the last one, we should to uh, integrate the informal sector in our policy because uh, they uh, they have the uh, the veto law investment management in Thailand and the important mechanism to promote the TR uh, and TR in the community and we should to uh, promote to the waste uh, management uh, in Thailand. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Masana. That was excellent. And just a couple of uh, points that I, I mean, there's so much information in there. A couple of things that I uh, sort of thought about that really stood out was um, the government procurement using that as a tool to do work on single-use plastic products. Your very strong emphasis on partnerships. I, I really like the MOUs um, and the way that you're reaching out to different stakeholders to develop joint action and the roadmap, which sets out very clear targets. So that's extremely interesting. We'll come back to you and ask you some questions at the end of the panel, um, but you'll see a few questions on the Q&A, so feel free to jump on if it's a question about your presentation and answer any of those. So thank you, Asana. We're just going to move to our next speaker uh, and on the next page. We will see uh, Mrs. Sudevi Subron from uh, Mauritius, and she's going to explain uh, what they are doing there, which is also um, pretty extensive and exciting to see. So, Sudevi, welcome. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Aysen. Good, good morning, good, good evening, and good afternoon, everybody. So, I'm from Mauritius. I'm Sudevi Subron. So I will talk about the experience for Mauritius, how we are controlling plastic pollution in Mauritius. So I will talk about the facts and figures. You will see that we are having um, around 550,000 tons of solid waste that are generated annually, and about 76,000 plastic waste are generated, which uh, represent 14%, and only 4% of them are recycled. For the pet bottles, so we have uh, 128 million pet bottles that are commercialized, and only 40% of them are recycled. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yes, we have the plastic waste. This is a characterization that has been done by our ministry. So we have the different, out of the 14% of the plastic waste, we have the different types. We have the LDP, the PVC, the, P, uh, the polystyrene, the STP, and uh, PET. So next slide, please. Next slide. So as we know, uh, plastic, it takes long time to degrade. Uh, it takes from 200 years. It can go up to 1,000 years. So we have to be very careful with plastic waste. Next slide. Next slide, please. So uh, now I'm going to talk about the impacts. We have a lot of impacts of plastic waste. First of all, first of it is the ISOs. We can see a lot of plastic waste. It goes in the on the land, in the waterways, and it causes ISO. Next slide. It also uh, causes flooding uh, when the drains are blocked. And we had recently had this uh, problem of uh, flooding where our road was flooded and a lot of, of uh, uh, vehicles, they collided on the road and it caused accident. And even there was a death of uh, uh, people when there was uh, flooding. Next slide, please. So we also have impacts uh, uh, with accumulation of uh, water. We have proliferation of uh, vector bone diseases. We have also have air pollution when uh, the plastic is burned. Next slide. Um, we have uh, when uh, the drains uh, they carry the plastic waste and it goes to the sea and this is the impact uh, which we had not now but previously in the in our harbor but now it is being clean and also we have another problem is the uh, impact on health this is from literature uh, we can get cardiovascular diseases from endocrine disruption some birth defect immune system suppression 
and, and developmental problem in children. Next slide. So recently we had this COVID and we have seen that there was a lot of uh, masks, the uh, takeaways, the, uh, the food that were packed in plastic and they were using a lot of plastic. So this we have to also see how we can reduce uh, plastic waste because when we have pandemic, we have to have the alternatives. Next slide, please. So uh, for our government policy on single use plastic product, we have uh, with a new government for in the government program, we had uh, uh, announced to make Mauritius a cleaner, greener country to adopt a responsible and environmentally sustainable development policy to make Mauritius a plastic free country in the nearest possible delay. And we had an assist de l'environnement uh, which was held in last December. And uh, one of the theme was control of plastic pollution. And uh, we are presently preparing the master plan and the uh, theme will be finalized. We also, uh, Mauritius will promote circularity in the use of plastic with ultimate goal to reduce plastic waste entering the environment. Next slide. So uh, the theme, as I said, uh, was uh, chosen for the last assist de l'environnement. And there was a policy that was developed on strengthening the legislation, uh, legislation and promoting alternative. And prom the second one was promoting reuse and recycling. The third one was to encourage sensitization. And the fourth one was to support research and development. Next slide. So uh, we have three uh, uh, regulations uh, which are in place. The first one was for the pet bottles, and previously it was mainly to control uh, pet uh, pet uh, for for the beverage and water company, and it was only for the local market that the pet bottles were controlled. Next slide. So this pet bottle, it came into uh, promulgation from 2001, but we can see that uh, there was not much progress. So we had to give some financial incentives and the incentives uh, were, uh, we gave uh, them to collect, it was 15 rupees then for the export, then five rupees for, for the manufacturers, and recently, it is 15 rupees for both export and import and in excess of only one ton. Next, next, next slide, please. So you will see the progress that has been made. Not much progress, only 43% of uh, used pet bottles were recycled, were collected for recycling. And this is not much. And we are wanting to have a uh, more percentage of pet bottle to be uh, collected and sent for recycling. Next slide. So uh, we are now proposing some amendment because uh, previously it was only for uh, local manufacturers. And now we are going to uh, include voters also, which are uh, who are importing pets. And it will include not only carbonated drink and water, but also juice, syrup, vinegar, and dairy product. Next slide. So these are bottles uh, that will be included uh, in our pet bottle regulation, and they will be regulated, and uh, the there will be extended producer responsibility where the producers will have to collect and uh, recycle their used pet bottles. Next slide. So the second regulation is the plastic bag regulation. And the uh, plastic bag regulation was promulgated in uh, uh, 2015 and uh, it came into force in January 2016. It was a ban on import, manufacture, sale and supply. And we had excluded 11 type of plastic, plastic bag. And we had uh, monitoring done on the biodegradable and compostable bag which are produced and imported. So from 2016 to now, 21 million ton was imported of biodegradable and compostable bag, and around 188 million tons were manufactured locally. 
We had also had the enforcement and there was some contravention and prosecution that was done. And we also seized the plastic bag at court. Next slide, please. You have two minutes. Oh, okay. So the environment protection uh, banning um, bag regulation was repealed and replaced. And these uh, now make provision for possession, import and manufacture. And the fine was strengthened and uh, we have removed the roll on and uh, small pocket bags and the bags which were sent for, which were used for export. Next uh, slide. Next slide, please. So these are the banned plastic bags. Uh, this is the small bags and duty free bags. Uh, next slide. So these are the exempted bags that are now in the new regulation that are allowed. Next slide, please. Uh, we have the now promulgated the environment protection control of single use product. And this has been promulgated uh, uh, since July 2020. And we have banned uh, uh, the single use, like the cutteries of pork, the knives, the spoon, the chopstick, the plates, the bowls, and the, the tray, the straw, the food containers, and we have the different points for possession for traders and for importers and for manufacturers. Next slide, please. So these are the uh, the products, single product that we are going to ban. But we have the exception that the uh, the plastic tray, the hinge container, and the seal uh, plastic straw forming part of integral packaging will not uh, be exempted from January uh, 2021 but uh, by uh, April 2021, because these are taking a longer time. We have representation from the manufacturers and the importers. Next slide, please. So the challenges faced, we are getting the resistance from manufacturers. We have the technological problem. That is, uh, they say that they are not adapting to the machineries to have this uh, product made from biological product, we have the high cost of alternatives, and we are getting some problem uh, with enforcement. We have, uh, as we have lack of, in, of uh, enforcement uh, because we don't have enough uh, personnel. Next slide, please. So the trade-off, uh, what we have to do for that, for this to work, we have to do a lot of sensitization. We have to use a lot of uh, alternatives to plastic. We have to strengthen our enforcement and we have to move towards circularity. Next slide. So uh, we are doing the awareness raising uh, and different uh, target groups, namely children, youth, women, community and senior citizens are uh, sensitized and we are having radio talks, uh, TV program. And we are also talking about the alternatives that we can use. Next slide. So these are the sensitization and awareness raising as we have promulgated the uh, two, two, two regulation. We have had uh, the massive sensitization and this is the expo one that was done and we can see a lot of SMEs that are moving toward this uh, uh, alternative that is the cloth bag, the pulp plates, the paper plates, uh, a lot of uh, innovative alternatives that are being uh introduce i think uh, i have had all the time so these are alternatives that are being promoted we are on par we are promoting eco folders long lasting uh, water bottles and uh, during our event and we are empowering our women prisoners in promoting all these plastic and we are collaborating with uh, our private sectors to solicit in for distribution of eco-friendly and long-lasting bag in all our household of Mauritius. So I think Excellent. You, and you've got yeah. about 20 seconds left, but I know that you've got some great pictures just to flip through and show people some examples. If you could just do that quickly and then we could yeah. um, conclude there. Yeah, so these are the, uh, the bags that are being promoted. You see that the cloth bag, the uh, woven bags, the nylon bags, which are long lasting. And these also the cooler bags. We are telling the, our private sector to do that so that they, they can uh, have uh, the frozen, 
frozen thing to be put there and taken from the supermarket. Next slide. So these are the biodegradable containers. And uh, as I said, we, we have a lot of SMEs that are entering this market. Next slide. Next slide. So for the long lasting one, long lasting containers, we are not, we will sensitize our, our, our uh, population to use the long lasting uh, containers. But uh, in the long run, we might promote them in our events. Next slide. So this is a long, long lasting bottles. It is widely being used by our students and we are also promoting them for uh, in our events, in our workshop, in our events so that they can use it. And these bottles they will use and uh, we are also planning to have fountains to be installed in our, our public places, in our schools and in our government, uh, government offices. Next slide. Okay. Okay, so Devi, we'll just have um, 20 more seconds and then we just need to wrap up very quickly now. Okay, so so we are also moving to our circularity. We, are, we, are, we will have to do a lot of recycling. We, have, we, are, pro, we are putting a lot of eco beans, which are being put by our ministry. And we have also the construction of civic amenity centers uh, so that they can separate their waste and uh, and uh, then collect it to the recyclers. Next slide. This one is an interesting one. Next, this you will see that we have marked all the recyclers, and you see we have a lot of civic community centers. We have five of them, and the first one will come into operation, the Lachambe one, as from November 2020. So the, the other one, the other four one, Oshboa, Pukredo, La Laura, and La Brasserie will come afterwards. And then uh, after sorting, they will go to the recyclers and the remaining waste will go to the mosques. Next slide. Excellent. I'm going to have to stop you there, Sudevi. Um, so do you yeah. want to just stop on this one slide? Because here's some great examples okay. of some recycled one, plastic products. This one, uh, the recycling plastic product, uh, you see we have a recycler. Uh, who is doing the benches and uh, fences for us. So we are moving toward this recycling uh, thing and uh, we are producing uh, excellent uh, benches and cables for us. So that's all for, for me. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Sorry to break you off, Sir Devi. And I know you've got lots of great information in there. The, the, remember that the recording, but also the presentations will be shared with everyone at the end. And so um, you'll be able to get uh, some of the other information that is very useful uh, as well after this event. So thank you very much, Sir Devi. If you could just um, wait for the panel session, we'll call you back to ask, ask you some questions. Um, excellent presentation. I really like the expo event. I thought that was a great idea. The sensitization is obviously something that you you're considering is very important, which is nice to see, and enforcement. So we'll come back to you. I just want to move on quickly to our next speaker. Uh, and um, here we go. Oh, back one, maybe. Once, there we go, back one slide. Yep, okay, Dumisani Buthalezi. Um, welcome. Uh, he is um, from the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries in South Africa. A, a waste expert has been involved uh, in this area for some time, and it's a pleasure to have you to talk to us today about what's happening in South Africa and what are the opportunities and challenges around developing policy. Welcome. Thank you so much, colleagues. Um, good morning, uh, good evening. Um, it's a morning in South Africa. It's about uh, five past um, 11. Thank you for providing us an opportunity as the National Department uh, of Environmental Affairs to present uh, our position on um, uh, single-use uh, plastics. Next slide. So, colleagues, our approach is the government, um, in uh, especially the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries. It's first to acknowledge the role that plastic um, uh, plays in our socioeconomic uh, uh, development. It's been there. There's been a lot of innovations. And um, you might uh, also agree with me that for countries that are still uh, industrializing, plastic, it's quite um, central because it provides support to 
um, a wide range of sectors um, man, in, under the manufacturing um, a, a segment. But then we also need to accept uh, colleagues that most plastic, plastic materials escape into the land and marine environment. And unfortunately, especially the fossil fuel based uh, type of plastics, they take time to disappear in, in the environment. Um, and plastic is increasingly considered as one of the problematic waste streams that are occupying landfill sites, illegal dams, rivers. And in Africa, it's not only an environmental issue, according to Jambek, it's also affecting local fisheries, for instance, biodiversity and uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, talking um, river uh, systems or pipe systems. Next slide. So, uh, colleagues, this is uh, a reflection of how the sector is doing in South Africa. This is our um, local uh, consumption of, of, of plastic. You could see that generally the sector uh, is, is, is growing. There's a lot of uh, uh, production, um, except in the year around 2008 to 2009 with the global economic uh, uh, meltdown, but otherwise, the the sector and the contribution of the sector into the gdp it's it's noted next slide so south africa might be um in the sadek region in africa um but then the production it's uh, still significant in, co in in comparison to um other uh, countries it might be at 0 0.5 percent but if you check that in terms of quantities um, it's, a, it's a really significant um, a number. And it's the very same increase is worrying because South Africa, like many developing countries, is still lacking infrastructure uh, for waste services uh, a, a provision. And we are not covering the whole um, corners uh, of, of, of South Africa. Uh, some municipalities are still struggling. Uh, to provide basic uh, minimum infrastructure uh, to control waste. And that includes um, a plastics. Hence then um, that when we look at the sector as um, a very significant contributor in terms of job um, creation, we also worry so much about the escape of, or rather the leakage of the very same plastic into, into the environment. And it is our mindage as the, as the government to act and provide solutions in, into that. Next slide. So this is another example of um, a, a, a plastic, especially packaging. Um, I think South Africa is sitting at about 54% in terms of uh, uh, plastic, uh, single-use plastic uh, 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 packaging. And that is a significant uh, number. But globally, you could see the sector is also um, uh, growing. Consumers want flexible um, uh, products, uh, very uh, nice products to have. Unfortunately, some of these products are made out of um, uh, plastics, and there's less and less um, alternatives, of course. Um, you can move. Next slide. Uh, so we also fall in um, the region that consumes or rather uh, fails to manage um, plastic, especially when it comes to marine litter uh, pollution. Uh, next slide. Um, we basically uh, use um, this uh, basic uh, definition of what single-use um, uh, plastics are. And then this translates into our policy uh, statements. For example, the extended producer responsibility, uh, a, a policy instrument that we have advertised um, now, it's, it's, it, it focuses on this uh, type of single-use um, plastics going forward. We will be adding um, other materials that fall under the biodegradables or compostables as alternatives. Um, but these are the common, most common single-use plastic materials that are in abundance, and we our our focus is on them because they get to be used almost on a daily um, basis. We have just conducted 
a survey on plastic straws and the responses that we have received from um, the public, because we had video interviews and online in, in interviews, then you could realize that, uh, in fact, people are, are saying, uh, my drink still tastes the same, even if I don't drink um, out of um, a, a straw. So there's really no use uh, for me to use a straw. And retailers are saying uh, they are ready to provide alternatives or to remove straws from their shelves. But then the question is, the customers or other consumers would demand a straw sometimes. So there's a lot of awareness raising that needs to go um, um, with that. Next slide. These are some of the reasons why we don't need to use um, uh, single-use plastic products, uh, colleagues. You um, all part of this uh, work, you understand very well. Next slide. So in terms of uh, mis plastic waste uh, mismanagement and uh, our carelessness um, in, in terms of uh, failing to block plastic from affecting our marine um, uh, systems. We are rating at number 11 compared to um, other countries in the world. That is, um, it's really worrying, uh, considering that we are in uh, on the southern tip of, of the world um, and in Africa, but um, look at our consumption and our failure to, to, to manage and provide solutions to blocking or, or handling plastic very well. Next slide. Um, so we we did um, plastic material flow study, which uh, confirmed that we are sitting at about um, 54% uh, and, and it's largely uh, single use uh, packaging. Next slide. This is um, a, a, a popular slide. Um, we all have seen this, this um, a, a, a picture. It basically indicates that we still have a long way um, to go because a lot of practices in many parts of the world um, are still linear. There's no circularity um, uh, where it's available. It's faced with challenges sometimes um, it stops. Sometimes um, there's very little budget that goes into that uh, circularity uh, sy systems. Then the systems would, would, would usually fail. The failures of separation net source, um, for, for instance, where municipalities are claiming that it's very uh, expensive to run um, separation net source um, um, initiatives or diversion um, uh, systems. So most of municipalities find it easy to collect and dispose in in, in the landfill sites, which for, for I think for us, it's very unfair uh, because if municipalities can allocate money for collection and disposal, it means with time they could structure uh, the very same funding or apply for more money to start separation at source where plastic could be diverted for other use. Next slide. Okay, you have two more minutes. Um, so Sorry the to interrupt. The plastic materials uh, flow study um, indicated that there's a serious problem with single use um, in the country. Single uh, use plastic waste is likely to increase with projected increase in population growth and even exp ex expansion, especially with regards to um, informal uh, settlements. The sprawling informal spaza shops economy has given rise to non-compliant single-use plastic carrier uh, bags. Um, next slide. So in terms of policy intervention, colleagues, we are having the national waste management strategy. Um, a new one was approved again uh, last month. Uh, by by cabinet, uh, so we have new targets and new actions and goals for um, our interventions in waste uh, management. But we also have the MOU that was signed by uh, uh, government, business, and uh, the social partners to try and address uh, um, plastic bags. But that MOU failed 
uh, dismally to address the problem of plastic bags. That is why we are now moving towards reviewing the, the, the targets and the requirements. We've actually um, amended our uh, plastic bag regulations to require uh, the manufacturing of plastic bags using 50% until 100% in 2027. But I need to be honest, the public wants us to ban plastic bag based on the responses that we have received. Um, the South Africans want us to ban plastic bags. Uh, next slide. Um, so we still have these uh, uh, challenges. The current policy instrument, it's only the plastic bag regulation, which does not consider uh, other type of single use. There's no policy instrument that manages other single use. It's only the plastic um, bag. The other single use plastic products are managed just like any other waste generally. Um, so we are moving towards that. There is a study that we are conducting now looking at the social economic impact of uh, a, a policy on, on, on single, other single use uh, products beyond uh, the, the, the plastic bags. So we will be coming up with a, a new policy instrument that will consider other uh, a single use plastic products. It could be the banning uh, or the phase out of, um, of, of these plastic uh, products. We had a meeting with, with Parliament and the Minister yesterday. There's a strong move towards uh, banning and providing alternatives um, in, in the country. We still have to uh, work on that and consult and then make sure that we move um, and identify uh, specific timelines that would be um, about the phasing out um, a period, but the work has already started. Next slide. Um, we've done this. Uh, next slide. Uh, it's about the plastic bag um, uh, 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 policies. Um, so these are the options that uh, the public suggested, including the industry. Next slide. So the new requirement is that plastic care bags and plastic flat, flat bags must be made from a minimum of 50% post-consumer recycled by 1 January 2023, uh, 2025 at 75%, 100% by 2027. But again, the public is against uh, this timeline. They are saying it's forever. We, we need to be at 100% uh, now in 2025 instead of 2027, or consider banning plastic bags uh, totally. Uh, next slide. Um, Just one more minute. This, uh, doing the this is the survey that we are um, uh, conducting now. Um, the work has, has has started. It's ongoing. We will be providing um, information after um, the the study is is finalized. But in terms of LCA, the CSIR, it's not the department, but the CSIR in South Africa has done the LCA for plastic bags. We can share the 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 the, the report uh, with with the colleagues here. Um, and I know that. LCA is a requirement in our new EPR uh, policy instrument for paper and packaging waste. Um, and then the work around straws, we are finalizing the action around um, the straws. Um, it, it, it will be a policy instrument that will add into um, the policy instrument that deals with plastic bags because you want to group all single use under one policy um, instrument if 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 that is uh, possible depending on what the assessment will tell us next slide so the our recommendation is just is that we need to develop a new policy instrument to address single use plastic because currently there's none thank you Excellent, and thank you, Dumasani, for that for that great presentation. Um, and once again, it's fantastic to see uh, how you're thinking about developing policy and what you're focusing on. It's extremely interesting. I'd just like to invite back our other speakers, Wasana um, and um, Sudevi.
Uh, if you could just come uh, unmute yourselves. And I, I'm just going to tell everyone now, we, we will end five minutes late because I do want to give a full 10 minutes um, Q&A because we've got lots of questions to ask our panellists and um, they have just such a lot of experience in developing policy. It'll be great to hear some of their answers um, and, and hear from them um, on things that we should be thinking about. Um, I've got a question here for um, Wasana. Uh, somebody asked us um, how well has Thailand done in reaching its first target, particular on, particularly on stopping the three types of plastic in 2019, and how do you measure the achievement of that target? Hi. Uh, uh, for the first, the first target, you mean the first target, right? 2019. Did you reach, the, did you reach that target? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, we list uh, uh, in in the first target. We have the three uh, uh, type of the plastic. Uh, we uh, list for the uh, plastic capsule and for the oxo and the microbe. We uh, process uh, to cooperate with the uh, release organization to uh, to do uh, this and. For the plastic capsule, uh, we achieve because uh, we cooperate with the private sector, uh, with the uh, drinking water producer for uh, stop using the, the, the capsule. So uh, we think that uh, the, co the cooperation with the uh, stakeholders, uh, the public private partnership is uh, important for the, the, the reduce law. Uh, Stop using for the, the plastic or single-use plastic. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. So, Devi, you um, are working, reaching out and working with um, stakeholders as well. You have quite a strong focus on sensitisation, which was, was great to see. What do you think works best, in your opinion, when you're trying to sensitise consumers and stakeholders to the problems um, of plastic product pollution and also alternatives? What what things have worked best? I mean, you you, sh you gave some examples of radio talks and different groups and and TV sort of adverts or videos. What works best in your opinion? Yeah, yeah. for the yes, you mean for the uh, uh, consumer behavior and uh, the. Uh, oh, Wasana, you can you can answer this question too. It's really for Sudevi, but Wasana, I mean. You saw some examples of Sue Devi who had um, shown sensitization campaigns. Is Thailand doing that as well? Yes. Consumers? Yes, uh, you asked for the, the, the MOU or? No, I was just. I, I tell you what, I'll ask Sue Devi first, Wasana. Okay. So if you just if you just turn your just just wait, Sue Devi, you had lots of campaigns around sensitisation. What works best yeah. in your opinion? Yeah. Uh, so uh, for me, uh, I would say with the plastic bag regulation, which came into force in uh, uh, 2016, we have seen. Uh, we did a lot of sensitization, a lot of radio talk, a lot of TV, and uh, we have seen that uh, has impacted mainly on the big, big supermarket, big, big, uh, con uh, big uh, private sectors. They have stopped using this plastic bag. But what happened? We had this exempted plastic bag, the roll on, which was used for uh, only fresh uh, meat and, and chicken. And this was flooded in our markets, in our vegetable markets, and uh, uh, they were using it illegally. But since there was a loophole in our uh, legislation, we can cannot do this uh, uh, enforcement. We have seen that our and uh, our sensitization was very good at that time itself. But because there was this uh, exemption, they used illegally for other use. And now also uh, uh, with the promulgation of the single-use uh, 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 plastic uh, bag, uh, plastic uh, containers, we have done a lot of sensitization, and we have to see if they are really uh, they are really uh, abiding by the law. 
We have to see so, because now okay. it will be us from January. But okay, the, thank for, you, for the plastic bag, it was okay. Okay, thank you very much. Good answer. If you could just mute yourself while you're not talking, and I'm just going to ask Dumasani a question now. Here is a question for you. Um, what do you feel your country or South Africa would need or could need in information or support in developing more policy on single-use plastic products? Thank you for, for the question. If I can try to understand, you are saying what would we need? Yeah, what, what do you do you think you need more information or support on something and to help you develop policy on single use plastic products? Or do you think well, you already have enough information and now it's a case of developing? We definitely, we definitely thank you for your question. We we definitely need um, uh, support. We need more information to make an informed uh, policy uh, position. Um, there is a very strong um, uh, uh, reaction from from the industry Ev for every move that we we we, we take we are um, attacked if i may put it in that way and we get challenged to provide scientific evidence um that supports our um, a, a policy um, a decision so it would be very handy if if someone comes in and say this is the new research we want to assist south africa in this uh, area because we haven't done much um, to be quite honest and so we we really um, need that support and more information especially on the targets especially uh, and also on the alternatives um, for for instance and the social um, economic um, impact uh, studies because we are told that the position that we want to take would affect um, employment, would also affect um, the industry. So, so sometimes we find ourselves having to um, consider some of these things that would compromise the environment at the end of the day. So having uh, more good information would assist. Okay, just another question. I'm following up on that. I mean, how do you best engage the informal sector? So, does the informal sector play quite a role in this area in South Africa? I know it does in in Thailand. Does it in South Africa? Uh, building from um, case studies from Brazil and other um, countries in the developing world, we have uh, what we call a waste picker integration guideline. Um, because we acknowledge the labor um, that these people are actually providing and no one is paying them. They, they contribute, they assist municipalities in actually saving um, huge costs in managing um, uh, uh, this waste. So we have very good relationship with the waste picker um, uh, representative organizations. We, we support their initiatives, we, we donate where, where possible, but we, we continuously engage municipalities to try and find a way to work with the uh, um, uh, waste pickers because there's really no way, the country would be filthy if um, um, waste pickers were to be stopped. So the national government is leading in that work. There is a very good relationship. Excellent. Thank you, Dumasani. I'm going to go back to Wasana and ask you a question. I mean, you're doing a lot of work in Thailand around um, bringing people together. Dumasani, if you could just mute yourself while you're wait waiting, just so we don't have any um, background noise. But Wasana, you um, gave examples of the government working together with MOUs, with, with companies, with the food service uh, industry. How hard has it been to get all those stakeholders together around the table, and how important is that to your policy making? For the policy, policy for the, the uh, single use plastic in the food delivery. Yes. So how important has it been to get the industry and other stakeholders um, to talk? together about what to do on single-use plastic products? Yes, we have the, the, the cooperation and we have the meeting with the, uh, the, the stakeholder for the platform and uh, for everybody to, uh, to meeting and we have the, uh, uh, the, the measure and the, the practice 
uh, for the, the 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 stakeholder we try to contact with the the producer for the packaging for the in uh, inventory friendly packaging to produce the the compostable packaging for the uh, the food delivery and to reduce the the single use plastic Excellent. And another question, somebody had a question around your MOU with the food service operators. What what are businesses committing to under this MOU? Do they use reusable containers rather than single-use plastic products? Is that what they're committing to? Yes, uh, we, we, we promote for the uh, compostable packaging and for the reusable packaging uh, is uh, under consideration because it's maybe it's uh, hard to to do okay excellent so Devi, i've got a question for you uh, and then we might just ask one question for everyone to end but so Devi, here's your question how hard is it to enforce policy on single-use plastic products yes for, uh, for sue Devi. yeah for the enforcement one, uh, uh, we have the legislation and the, there are a lot of clauses that are related. And we, at the ministry, we have uh, one of the division, which is called the Pollution Prevention and Control Division, together with the police, the environment, the policemen of environment sector. They do the enforcement. What they do, they do the crackdown operation. They go in the market, they do the crackdown, they see uh, if they if they were, uh, if they are using these plastic bags, then they are going to seize it. The other one, what we do, it is at the port. At the port, we do uh, the custom officers. They tell us that this is they don't have a certificate, a registration certificate. Then we go there and we do the seizing of. We seize this uh, plastic bag and we send them to the recyclers for recycling. So this is how we do the our enforcement but now Excellent. we have, we have uh, uh, one innovative uh, equipment that have been brought in our laboratory which is a ftir and we are using it to see what are the material there so we, we when we go in the in the court we will tell them uh, according to our expert these are the plastic material in the bags and that's why we have seized so Excellent. That's, are... that's a great example, Sudevi. And it's a very interesting, I think, conversation that we could speak about for a long time. But the enforcement, you gave some really interesting information there around how you enforce that policy. Uh, and I think that will be interest, interesting to follow up on. We can't do that right now um, because we're coming to the end of our session. And I want to thank all three of you for coming along today and presenting on behalf of your country on your policy and your policy development and the opportunities and challenges. It was extremely um, useful to hear um, these case studies and it gives a lot of rich sort of information for others uh, to think about and to learn from. So I'd like to thank all three of you today uh, it's been wonderful to have you join us, and um, I would like to now uh, introduce our just our last speaker of the day, and that is Lorenz, who's coming back just to give a quick summary of the key points. Lorenz. Yes, thank you very much, Alison, and thanks everyone. I mean, it's been it's been really really hectic, uh, so thank you. Very much. I mean, I will not do, it, but um, I I really wanted to highlight that the. Um, the question and answer and both uh, the chat as well has been uh, has been manic through the day. There's been a lot of questions and, and uh, the, the discussion certainly shows that there is a huge interest for this. Uh, maybe some points to, to highlight in terms of summary. I mean, certainly we've seen that there is a lot of learnings from uh, the LCA studies. Uh, it's also been interesting to hear from some of the participants that actually these learnings from LCA, we've, we've known about these conclusions for a long time. So really the key issue is to bring these learnings to, to the policy making, which is really happening now. And this is, this is exciting. At the same time, uh, we've seen also the limitations of, of, uh, of LCA. So we cannot solve absolutely everything, but that's, uh, that's important. And, and it's important as well to consider other elements, uh, the impacts from litter and, and marine litter in particular have been highlighted. Um, but then we've heard a lot, and, and I think the, the presentations today from uh, Thailand, Mauritius, and South Africa, I mean, it's been extremely enlightening. We've, we've seen a lot of the, the good progress that is being made, but also the challenges. 
that they are facing. And many of these challenges, I mean, linked to uh, lack of infrastructure, even though it's not just infrastructure and waste, but also infrastructure for reuse systems has been mentioned. Um, and we're seeing how actually we're, we're jumping and we're really going into a different type of, of uh, economy for plastics, uh, moving to this circular economy. The, the concept has been mentioned, I think, in all of the presentations. Uh, and this circular economy, it's not just about the recycling. It's not just closing the loop in the end, but it's also considering new ways of using, as, as mentioned. So more moving towards reuse systems uh, and reuse schemes, which we've seen in the LCA studies, tend to be uh, more uh, resource efficient uh, as long as the infrastructure is, is there, as long as they can be used properly, etc. Um, other uh, things that I've noted, and I was just checking the notes, um, it really the, the, the problem of accessing the data and getting the data right, the metrics um, are important. There's been also a few questions about, well, there's the collection, there's the sorting, uh, but does it actually mean recycling? uh when we're exporting waste to other countries does it actually get recycled and this is also something that we need to strengthen a bit more in terms of making sure that the definitions of what what goes where uh, are important uh, and perhaps just to close i mean i, I think we've seen a lot of uh, examples um key issues have been mentioned uh, i think consistently across all the all the country presentations such as the importance of consumer awareness and consumer behavior how do we communicate uh, to consumers to, to um, nudge the right types of behaviors? Um, but there's also a lot that is quite common. And, and in this respect, perhaps a discussion about how international cooperation can help uh, would, also be, would also be relevant uh, and how collaboration between countries could help. But maybe that's, that's a question then for the last, for the last uh, webinar, which will happen next uh, Tuesday. Um, and, sure that i've left out many important points that have been discussed today but certainly they will be uh, collected in the in the in the presentations the recording and hopefully also the q a summary that uh, that will be done in the end so i think we're really short of time so back to you alison and, and thank you very much absolutely everybody for uh, staying uh, for the whole presentation thanks Thank you, Lorenz. And I'm just going to say a big thank you from all of the team um, that's behind all oh, the chat there. There's quite a few of us and uh, it's been a very interactive session. Questions and answers were brilliant. Um, and so was the chat that was coming through. And I just want to give a plug for those that will still be awake uh, for our last session where you are having the European Commission, Canada and St. Lucia. Uh, present in our last session, so that'll be interesting. Um, and we'll have a behavioural uh, expert psychologist on the on the call too to talk about some of that work. So look, thank you very much for joining us. Have a great day or a great night wherever you are, and uh, we'll see you next time. And um, keep safe, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. bye.